Well, hi everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Today I want to highlight another YouTube creator called Where's Wally? There'll be a link to his channel in the description. Wally does a lot of really good science-related flat earth debunking. And today we're going to go over one of his videos, uh, which he did in combination with Red's Rhetoric, on a rocket launch that recently occurred in Florida. This rocket launch is interesting because it's an, a proof of the spherical rotating Earth. So we'll have a look at it, and then I encourage you to have a look at his channel. G'day hey everybody, where's Wally here? Well today it won't be pointing at stupid so much as well pointing at stupid people who don't like rocket launches, who think that they go up and then come straight back down again. Well I'm going to have a look at the Atlas V on August 8th I think it was, and um, Red's Rhetoric is glad he kindly let me have a, a play with some of his footage and it's absolutely brilliant. I'll just play the little piece I want to look at in close detail. I'll play it a little bit quickly here and just enjoy this for a second. You know, this is a rather remarkable photograph right here. And that is that this rocket was launched at night, just prior to dawn. You can see right here the black smoke of the rocket launch. And then as it reaches 38 miles, all of a sudden the smoke turns white. Well, why is that? It's because as the rocket went up, it hit the sunlight streaming past the Earth just prior to dawn. Much like the top of buildings and mountains are the first to be lit as dawn is approaching. The second thing is actually this area right here. Notice that the exhaust gases are expanding. That's because the atmosphere is getting thinner. Eventually, they will expand out all the way in the vacuum of space. Now, there's one other thing that we can see from another rocket launch that demonstrates this as well. Let me show it to you. Notice that the sound fades off as the shuttle gets higher and higher. This is for the same reason that the exhaust fume widens out. There's less air pressure, so the sound can no longer be transmitted. Eventually, you just get the silence of space. All you can hear is objects banging directly on the structure of this ship. Now here we'll have a look at the same launch from several different directions. Notice that the rocket is launched in darkness. It has a very specific spot that it hits sunlight and the vapor trail turns white. And notice that the exhaust boom widens out in all three videos. Now, just as mountaintops are illuminated first at dawn, the rocket is being shot up in darkness and hits the morning light at an altitude of 38 miles. This is actually a very good proof for curvature in itself. And we're seeing burnout on all five SRBs. Engine back up to full thrust. Solid rocket boosters, one minute, 50 seconds into flight. Vehicle's gone to close 
And here once again we see evidence of the thinning of the upper atmosphere and decrease in pressure as the exhaust plume opens up in all four videos. The other thing that this proves is that the rocket is continuing to go up. It's not going up and coming down or else the exhaust plumes would not be widening out like that. They'd be coming back together. So that's another argument that this video debunks. Acceleration limit, engine response, and vehicle body rate response looks good. RCS pyro valve has been fired. Reaction control system is pressurizing the flight levels. Now coming up on three minutes into flight. RD-180 pump speeds and injector pressures continue to look good as it's maintaining that throttle limiting. Three minutes, ten seconds in. Vehicle body rates continue to look good. And here, as the rocket continues up into the upper atmosphere, there's so little pressure, there's very little to hold that exhaust plume in, and it's spreading out massively. Standing by for payload fairing jettison. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison. And CFLR jettison complete as well. Vehicle now throttling back up to 95% thrust. Engine response looks good. Three minutes, 40 seconds in. And engine is now throttling to maintain 4.6 G acceleration limit. Engine response looks good. Now passing four minutes into flight, Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence. RD-180 engine continues to look good as it maintains that 4.6 G throttle acceleration limit. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is a rocket launch from the ground all the way to space. They're jettisoning the payload coverings and cooling the boosters down. Now, let's let Wally have a few moments here. So, Antonio, guru of gurus. What do you think is happening here? How can the camera, Red's camera, be on the ground at at uh, sea level and in the dark, and yet when the rocket is, what, 100 kilometers up, it is suddenly in full sunlight, and that is plain for all to see that it is now in full sunlight. And that can also be backed up by the, the video feed coming back from the rocket, but I won't bother showing you that because you'll just laugh at it. But when you look at the feeds from south and from north and from directly behind, you can see that the rocket is now clearly up in the dawn sunlight. So how on a flat earth is that going to happen, Antonio? I'd love to hear how you make up, I mean, explain that one. There's a pat on the head for you, Wally. Well, guys, Where's Wally is a rather small channel. He's only got 1,235 subscribers. I think Team Bob the Science Guy can do something about that, don't you? His videos tend to be rather short and to the point. He's a just the facts ma'am type of guy rather than a storyteller. So stop by and have a look at Where's Wally. Signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Hey, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe button down in the lower right corner. Give me a little bit of YouTube love here. I've been feeling a little neglected lately. So take care and...